Maryland football has been the biggest disappointment in the Big Ten. You are Locked On Terps, your daily podcast on the Maryland Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So thank you for making us part of your day. And today's episode is brought to you by the Game Time app. Down the Game Time app, create an account and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase i'm also doing work at insideblackandgold.net so make sure you guys head over to insideblackandgold.net for all your latest terps news maryland football has been the biggest letdown in all of the big 10 i think they have been one of the biggest letdowns this year in all of the big 10 and that continued on saturday against iowa i said it yesterday I've I had trouble watching that game after repeated, repeated, repeated performance of the same thing. It's hard to watch. I watch it. I put up with it. But it is tough to watch Maryland football right now. We are that bad and we don't do really anything well. And when you look at a football team and when you look at all the departments and all the different components that make up a football team. You hope that your team does a couple areas well, even when they're a bad team. Like when you think of bad teams in college football, there's usually still a few bright spots. And yeah, you could argue Maryland still has a couple, but that performance on Saturday against Iowa, nobody on the team looked that great. And the team certainly is not headed in the right direction. And this year was just a huge disappointment for Maryland football. I don't think there's any way, any other way you can put it. I think after making three straight bowl games, having three straight winning seasons and looking like we were going to be maybe the next kind of new program in the Big Ten, I I honestly thought we had a chance to be, you know how Indiana is this year? I'm not saying we were going to be able to be as good as Indiana this year is, but I thought we could be a flashy new Big Ten program that a lot of people swing under the radar and a lot of people don't talk about and a lot of people don't appreciate. But next thing you know, we're a 10-win team or we're um, we're headed to a big-time bowl game or something like that. I think similar to what Indiana football is doing right now, I thought Maryland football could be something like that. Not exactly. Indiana's having – a really good season for their standards. They've only lost one game and they're headed straight to the playoffs. But I thought Maryland football would have a chance to do something like that and be a sneaky new program. But no, this team is just really disappointing. And what I watched on Saturday was us just getting outperformed again in every category of our football team. Again, it starts with Mike Loxley. His game plan just was not good enough. It's not going to win you games. It's not going to get you to where you need to be. The way that we played that game, uh, the way we played situationally, the way we played every category of our football team, from quarterback to run game to offensive line to um, defensive side of the ball, the D-line, the linebacker room, it wasn't coached well enough. And I don't know what we're missing because I continue to say it's not like – we're losing games by like how we're supposed to lose them. Like I keep the eye on the spread of the game. The spread of this game was four points. We end up losing by 16 points. We were favored against Rutgers by six points. We end up losing by 14 points. Uh, Minnesota, I think we were four and a half or five and a half dogs or something like that. We end up losing 48 to 23 so it's not just like we're losing it's how we're losing the game sure if we lost to Iowa by a touchdown in a back and forth game I'm not going to sit here and just complain about the game and say we did nothing well and it starts with Michael Oxley but we're losing to teams in ways that we shouldn't be losing to teams and getting dominated in all different areas of the game Iowa absolutely just outmanned us outdid us out up front said, we're bigger than you up front. We're going to push you back, and we're going to run the football on you guys 
all game for the entire game, and you guys aren't going to be able to do anything about it. And we saw their key player, their key running back, Caleb Johnson, win them the game on offense. He won them the game on offense. It was really that simple. Um, and as well as their backup running back as well had a huge day for them. And Kamari Moulton, he had a better averages than uh, Caleb Johnson did. They didn't care. They said, you're not going to be good enough. We're just going to run the football with those two and see what happens. And that ended up working. They said, you're, we're going to be able to run the ball better than you. We're going to control the clock. We don't even have to worry about throwing the football. And they outrushed us 268 to 98. We have a problem on our hands. 268 to 98, they outrushed us. We knew they were running the football. They only threw the ball for 76 yards. They didn't even really try um, and throw the ball. And their quarterback, uh, Jackson Straighton, threw the ball 14 times, 76 yards. Meanwhile, they're running, they run the ball every single play. I've been saying Maryland needs to get a run game. Maryland has to get a run game. And we saw what a real Big Ten, big boy run game looks like. And clearly, we're not doing something right in recruiting or whatever the case is in the portal. We're not doing something right up front because I was showed that you in the Big Ten. It's not about throwing for 500 yards, and that's what Maryland has been seemingly trying to do. And I know some programs are able to do that, but everyone knows Big Ten football, you run the football, depend on your defense, and that's how you win games, and Iowa showed that. And clearly Maryland needs to get some of that in them because they're just so disappointing this year on the offensive side of the ball. I think it's too cute. We try and be too cute. We try and be too Big 12. Um, we, tr we try and throw the ball all over the place. And sure, that can be your identity, but you got to have some type of balance on your football team. Have to have some type of balance. Because clearly, depending on a quarterback where we don't have an elite Big 10 quarterback, we don't have a second team all Big 10 type of quarterback, you can't just throw the football for 400 yards every game and 50 attempts every single game and say, we're going to win the football team or we're going to win the football game. That doesn't work. So clearly Maryland needs to figure that out because that's something that's not just going to happen. I think that's a big reason we've been one of the biggest disappointments in the Big Ten. Uh, we just we can't we can't run the football at all. And our offensive line is absolutely a problem um, as well. And I think when you look at it, it's you lose to a team that only threw for 76 yards. And we knew the run game was coming and we didn't stop it. Their backup running back, Kamari Moulton, rushes for 12 carries, 114 yards with a 9.5 average. While their starter, Caleb Johnson, 35 carries, 164 yards. They were just running it down our throat and there was nothing we could do about it. And clearly that was what they did coming into the game. And we weren't prepared for it at all. Um, Roman Hemby couldn't get absolutely anything going in the rush game. Eight carries, 19 yards, pretty bad game uh, for him. Anyone outside of Ty Felt in the receiver game couldn't get much going at all. It was just an embarrassing performance. Our defense, I didn't think anybody um, in terms of units, in terms of the defensive line, in terms of the linebacking room, uh, in terms of the corner, like I didn't think anybody played that well. Like I, you can say the secondary played well and limited them to only 70 yards, but like I, there's not much to say. Like they only threw the ball 14 times. I thought our defensive line got absolutely pushed back, got absolutely smacked around, and you can't win in the Big Ten without having guys in the trenches, and I think Mike Loxley is learning that the hard way. And he's going to have to figure this out in recruiting because we've been flashy with the skill positions, but we're going to continue to be the biggest disappointment in the Big Ten if we can't get really good players up front. And they're tough to get. There's not just a surplus of them. Running backs, receivers, there's kind of a surplus. There's a lot of them. But in terms of the big man up front, there's not just a 100 of those guys walking around. Those guys are tough to find. But Mike Oxley, if he wants to be – a good coach in the Big Ten. I think he's realizing and you know, having Maryland where he wants to be. I think he's realizing that he's going to have to bring this, um, this, these big boys 
uh, these guys up front up to the next level because right now, whatever we're doing is not getting it done and is not going to work for Maryland football. But when I look at it, we're at the bottom of the Big Ten rankings. I think we're the biggest disappointment in the Big Ten. Maybe you could argue um, – USC, but being a being talking about Maryland, being a Maryland fan, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you it's Maryland. Um, a lot of people might tell you um, USC just because they're the flashier program and everyone knows it, but I'm gonna go ahead and tell you Maryland. Purdue's also down there. Um, honestly, though, just in conference, it's 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 pretty it's pretty embarrassing where we are now um, in conference. Uh, now that I look at it, USC actually isn't has four conference wins now. Um, while we only have one, Purdue has zero. So I think you could argue we're just the biggest disappointment in the Big Ten, how we were projected to be a middle team in the Big Ten and how we're rock bottom worst team in the Big Ten right now. The quarterback room is kind of a mess. Does it have a future? What do we do with it? I'll talk about that next. Have you ever wanted to go to a game at the last minute, like a Maryland Terrapins game, but finding tickets is hard? I have been there before. Buying tickets to your favorite event shouldn't be stressful. Game time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guaranteed, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of an event and even an hour after it starts, it's a place to find last-minute seats and take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lots on College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account or redeem code Lots on College for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. What do we do with this quarterback situation for Maryland? It's a mess right now. I think it absolutely has a future uh, just because of Malik Washington. But without Malik Washington, I would be looking at this situation and I'd be really dull about this whole thing. I think that MJ Morris got an opportunity to play. And I think what happened was it showed that this team right now, a no quarterback is going to play well. If it's not set up right, if it's not people aren't put in the right positions, if things aren't going the right way, if you don't have an offensive line, if you don't have different things around them, the quarterback's not going to play well. And I think we saw that uh, with MJ Morris. I think we saw a guy that he sure he has talented. He made some sh- throws, but he's just not going to be able to be successful against a good football team like Iowa is, like a good defense like Iowa is um, without having stuff around him a little bit. And I think Coach Loxley has to stop saying our our uh, our system's quarterback proof. It's proven because clearly it's not. Clearly you need to get some guys on the offensive line. Clearly you need to get um a get a run game going because it's not it's not going to be quarterback proof if your guys up front can't block. And it's pretty obvious I would say we have the worst offensive line in the Big Ten. I don't know exactly. I don't know what Purdue's is looking like. Purdue's, uh, Purdue's one in ten right now, so maybe they have a worse one than us, I would guess. But it's got to be down there for the worst offensive line in football um, in the Big Ten. We just can't do anything with it. Uh, we can't pass protect uh, one, which makes it so hard because we're down a lot of games and we're playing a drop back style game and we can't pass protect anybody. We can't get anything going um, in terms of a longer passing game. And it's hard to get deep passers passing uh, game going. And that's the strength of our team. We can't get the strength of our team going, uh, which is explosiveness um, in that receiver room with Ty Felton and Caden Prather. Doesn't matter who the quarterback is. I I'm seeing MJ Morris in the game. We can't get any of that going because we just don't, have enough time we don't have enough guys back there uh, that give us enough time right now uh and i saw uh guys i saw them get to the quarterback i saw uh this kid ethan herkett have two sacks um on us and i saw max uh llewellyn uh have a sack on us and i saw multiple pressures from other guys and i just saw us 
just clearly get dominated up front, uh, which is something that just can't happen uh, every single game if we want our quarterback to be successful. Um, and so to me, my point is not mainly more about the quarterback room is that who is going to work <laughs> with this offensive line right now? This thing has to get retooled. It can't just be every year you just throw it together and say, we got a transfer from Georgia who didn't work out there. We got a couple guys from D2 or whatever um, who are looking, who played at a really high level at D2, and now they're going to make the Big Ten jump. Um, and we got another guy that we developed. It's not going to work like that. You're going to need to recruit three, four, five guys every single class that you develop and hopefully one two, one or two of them are really good players. And maybe you bring in another portal guy uh, to go along with those guys. I think the 2020 war class is a chance with some of those guys like Ryan Howerton and Therese Davis and Michael Hershey, some of those guys up front, those freshmen, I think they have a chance to actually be a group that Maryland has that plays a lot uh, that could potentially all been recruited by Maryland. I think that's how it has to happen. But MJ Morse couldn't be successful behind that line. Sure, he made some mistakes that weren't all on the offensive line, but he also just doesn't have a run game. They can't run block either. Uh, Nolan Ray uh, had a a good game running the football, but other than that, we couldn't run the football at all. Roman Hemby had eight carries, 19 yards. There's just not much going in the run game, and I just think it's not good enough, uh, to be honest. We only rushed for 98 yards. Um, and so we can't do either run. So I say, I don't even know how to judge MJ Morris versus Billy Edwards this year. Cause I think the team around them is pretty bad. I think it's good receivers, but nothing else. And that doesn't win football games. It just doesn't specifically in the big 10. It doesn't win football games. You can have, you see Iowa, they don't have the best. They don't have the most dudes outside, but they win in the trenches and they win at the running back spot. And that works, but you can't have the opposite because it doesn't work. It doesn't flow together. You can't have receivers, but no offensive line because you're just not going to have enough time. You can't have good running backs with no offensive line because they're just not going to get lengths. It starts up front. And so I have a trouble evaluating Billy Edwards um, and MJ Morris. Uh, I think it comes down to clearly Malik Washington is going to have to be um, one of our best players. Uh, and come in and find a way to make it work. But I also think that's unfair to what Washington can be. I don't know if he can walk in here and be something magical and make up for all the bad parts of our football team, and I don't want to ask him to do that. So I think it's a mess right now, and I think Coach Lox has got to get it figured out up front, and if he doesn't, our team isn't going to succeed, and Malik Washington's not going to be what a lot of people think he can be because there's just not going to be room for him to uh, flourish because he's just not going to have blocking up front. And plus, our receiver room gets definitely worse next year. Like next year, a lot of things go a little bit even more downhill potentially. Um, And I don't know if Malik Washington can just make up for it. Like five-star, four-star quarterbacks often don't just come in and are are look as good as they should because – Sometimes if they're starting, their team just isn't in the right spot um, and isn't ready for them to start. So that's why I'll be fine with Billy Edwards starting next year because apparently he's going to be back. Uh, so they're going to have to figure that out. I think that's something that they still have to work on. Malachi Palmer, Maryland basketball. I think he can have a big role for the team. We'll talk about that after this ad from FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 to get 150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sports app gives you everything you need to place your live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get the hunter in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-plays, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never wait to hunt and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. There's so many different things you can bet on with FanDuel right now, whether it's college football, whether it's the NBA, uh, whether there's a lot of college basketball on today. You can do all of that on FanDuel, so make sure you guys head over to FanDuel 
right now. I think freshman Malachi Palmer should be in the rotation for Maryland basketball. So it's pretty obvious now. Kevin Willard has made it pretty clear what the rotation uh, is going to look like look like for Maryland basketball. And I think we have a deep team, but I don't know about our bench yet. I think we have a much deeper team in terms of our starting lineup, and there's a lot more balance that I really like um, to the team that I think is going to allow us to be uh, successful this year. Uh, I think that Reese, Queen, Gillespie, Rodney Rice, those four are really talented. And I think Seltzer Miguel and Deshaun Harris-Smith need to improve for us to take a next step. But I still still feel pretty good about those six guys um, in our rotation. Um, and Jalen Young has given us good minutes as well. Had a big three against Villanova. I like Jalen Young's game. Uh, he brings experience in there. He doesn't try and do too much. Uh, played 11 minutes in the game. Uh, gives us a good backup guard type of guy. Uh, I think he's a pretty good player that can shoot the ball. Just does everything at a, a, a decent level, which is all you need off the bench. Um, and then Tafar Gapari got limited minutes against Villanova, but did play some. I think some of these big games were having trouble kind of finding minutes for guys, and we don't know who to go to um, in a lot of these situations. I think my first guy off the bench right now is Deshaun Harris-Smith. Uh, I, I mean, he is, he played the most minutes off the bench and I think he's a good player, but I do think he has some troubles coming off the bench. And I think, uh, in terms of scoring the basketball, we already know he's not a great shooter, which definitely hurts, uh, him overall, but I still think I like him coming off the bench, but, uh, I think Rodney Rice has done a really good job. And I think there's no way Rodney Rice shouldn't be starting. Uh, if anybody sell to Miguel and uh, Deshaun Harris-Smith should still be battling maybe for that last spot. But I want to see Selton Miguel turn it on. I know what kind of player he can be. Uh, I think we just got to see it still, uh, his talent come out. But I do think the freshman, Malachi Palmer, who I think a lot of people kind of slept on going into the year because everybody wants to talk about Derek Queen Meaning and rightfully so that that kid's different. I think he's going to be a first round draft pick. I'm like, Derek, I want you to play well, but don't play too well where you're going to the NBA. But I think I think that's I think that's going to happen. I just think he's too talented and has too high of a basketball IQ. And I think oh, he's a guy that you can just plug into literally any NBA team. And I think he works. Uh, to be completely honest, but I think he's overshadowed Malachi Palmer, who's his classmate um, in that class. And Malachi Palmer, I think, should be in the rotation. I like the way his confidence played against Villanova. Uh, he made a big shot, uh, made a big three, and it looks like he can shoot the ball. I wasn't really sure exactly how well he could shoot the ball. Uh, coming into the year just because like he had it gotten college park and I just didn't know like some guys they come in and we know they can shoot the lights out. I wasn't exactly sure with him but he looks really solid coming off the bench uh, and I think he's a guy that can shoot the ball can do a little bit of everything Um, and he's a younger player whenever you can get some of these younger players um, in the game you want to do that uh, because you want to prepare for the year I feel like sports always looking at the future college basketball you're always thinking about what recruiting who we're going to get next year how good's the incoming class you're always thinking about the nfl always thinking about the draft who's going to go in the first round next year who's really talented you're always thinking about uh the future and i think malachi palmer i think has a chance next year to be a really solid piece uh for us next to Gillespie, uh, next to Rodney Rice, who should all be back, I would think, um, and next to Deshaun Harris-Smith to give us a real good room um, in there and whoever else we pick up in the portal. So I think he absolutely could have a role. He also looked really solid um, against Kinesis where he had 10 points and played confident ball. So I expect him to be in the rotation now. Uh, I think that's kind of what we're looking at as a rotation. Of course, our starting five. And then after that, Deshaun, Tafar, Gapari, Jalen Young, and then Malachi Palmer. I think Gapari will go back and forth. It will be him or Geronimo getting uh, those uh, big man minutes for Queen or Julian Reese. Gapari offers us a little bit more of an – Outside game, we can play a little bit more four on one while Jordan Geronimo is more closer to the two big. So it might just depend on the game, but that's how I see it. And I do think Malachi Palmer should be in the rotation.
That's all we have for today. Thank you for listening to Locked on Terps. Make sure you like and subscribe. We're here every day talking Maryland football and basketball. So thank you for listening to Locked on Terps.